A black police officer, Frank, saved a baby abandoned in the garbage. Years later, Frank got a tragic call. What happened next is truly unbelievable. Frank was heading home from his night patrol duty one early morning when he heard the unsettling cries of a baby as he was walking by a garbage dump. Immediately worried, Frank dashed over to the dumpster and began searching for the source of the cries. It didn't take long before he found the baby girl wrapped in a dirty blanket. He couldn't believe someone would just dump an innocent baby among the trash, as if her life was not valuable. She was crying, her porcelain white skin covered in black goo. A smelly, dirty blanket barely protected her small, fragile body from the cold and the trash. Frank picked the baby out of the dumpster at once and started cuddling her. A few seconds later, she stopped crying and smiled up at Frank while trying to touch his face with her tiny, dirty hands. Even though his heart was broken and anger boiled inside him at the injustice, Frank couldn't help but smile back at her. Despite her ordeal, her joyful smile almost made him forget the dire state she was in. Frank checked her over for any sign of injury and luckily found none. Frank reported the case to child services. In the span of an hour, he had fallen in love with the little baby and couldn't bear the thought of her being left alone until they found her family or a place for her to stay. He didn't hesitate long before he requested to be Winnie's foster father for the time being, and it was granted. Frank took the baby, whom he later named Winnie, home, overjoyed with the new sense of purpose that taking care of her would bring into his boring and lonely life. Frank would drop Winnie off at daycare while leaving for work each morning. Then he would pick her up at the close of work. Frank happened to be quite close to his boss Eunice, as he was her most trusted and best performing officer. So when Frank explained the new situation to Eunice, she was compassionate. She took Frank off night patrols and placed him only on daytime patrols, so he would be able to spend the nights taking care of his baby girl. After a few months of fostering Winnie, and with no one claiming her, Frank made the big move to officially adopt her. He had fallen helplessly in love with her, and he wanted their father-daughter relationship to be permanent. A few weeks later, the adoption process was completed, and Frank officially became Winnie's dad. Frank showered his love and attention on Winnie. The little girl was such a sweet and cheerful baby. As she grew, she formed a strong bond with Frank. Sometimes Frank and Winnie received odd looks from people who weren't used to seeing a black father with a white daughter, but overall, most found the duo adorable. Five years later, Frank met a young woman, Sasha, in church. She was 29 and worked as a freelance journalist from home. The duo got talking and started spending time together. Soon enough, Frank and Sasha began dating. Frank told Sasha about Winnie right from the onset, and she didn't have any problems with that. Sasha even always came with gifts for Winnie whenever she visited Frank. Frank soon proposed to Sasha, and two months later, they had a modest wedding. Sasha initially treated Winnie like her own biological daughter. However, four years into their marriage, she hadn't fallen pregnant, and it hit her hard. Sasha desperately needed a baby of her own, but to her, Frank seemed like he wasn't very interested in having a child with her. Sasha felt that Winnie was the reason why Frank seemed unperturbed about their inability to have a child. So Sasha started venting her frustrations on Winnie and maltreating her. With time, Frank began noticing that the once cheerful Winnie was always moody. He often asked her if something was bothering her, but Winnie would always reply that she was fine. The little girl was just scared that Sasha would ruthlessly deal with her like she had threatened to do if she ever breathed a word about the maltreatment of Frank. One night, Frank asked Sasha what she thought was wrong with Winnie. Sasha immediately became furious. She yelled at Frank, telling him that all he cared about was Winnie. She screamed that Frank didn't care about her at all, and that was why he wasn't bothered about their infertility issue. Frank was taken aback by Sasha's reaction. He really loved her and had initially believed that she had a special bond with Winnie. Frank tried to defend himself, but Sasha angrily left the bedroom. From that day, 
the couple's relationship began crumbling. Sasha would always nag Frank every night that she wanted her own baby at all costs. As soon, Frank had no choice but to move out of their shared bedroom to the guest room, just for the sake of his sanity. Frank's moving out of their shared bedroom was like the final straw that broke the camel's back. One week later, Sasha filed for a divorce, and Frank simply let her go. But before leaving, Sasha threatened Frank that she would soon find a richer lover, and that she would later deal with him and his beloved daughter. Frank ignored her threats as the bluffs of an enraged woman. After Sarah's departure, Frank noticed that Winnie suddenly became the cheerful girl that he used to know. When he brought it to her attention, Winnie told him everything about Sasha's maltreatment amidst tears. Frank couldn't believe the woman he had loved and trusted had hurt and scared his little girl. He apologized for not protecting her and hugged her tightly. She was and would always remain the most precious gift in his life. Winnie stopped crying and planted a big kiss on her father's cheek. With Frank's undying love and care, Winnie grew into a beautiful, intelligent, and happy girl. The bond between the two continued growing stronger with each passing day. Six years later, Frank met a woman named Celine. She was 34 and a single mom to a one-year-old daughter, Lizzie. The duo got closer and soon started dating. Frank and Celine got married a few months after meeting each other. Frank had always wanted Winnie to grow up with a mother figure, and he found the perfect woman in Celine. Their marriage was a match made in heaven, and their new family was a happy one. Meanwhile, Eunice, Frank's boss, had been promoted to chief of police, and took Frank with her to work at the city's police headquarters. Frank became part of her security detail and followed Eunice everywhere she went. In fact, Frank was more like Eunice's personal assistant. He didn't yet know that he was about to get a tragic call that would change his life. One fateful afternoon, Frank was at home resting and watching TV. Celine had left for work in the morning, and Lizzie was in her bedroom having her nap. Winnie had gone out to get some groceries from a nearby store. Frank was dozing off when a call jolted him awake. He picked it up, thinking that it was his boss calling as usual, but the voice on the other end was not Eunice's, but Sasha's. Now listen and listen good, Frank, Sasha began. We have your beloved daughter here with us, and we're giving you a week to kill your boss, Eunice, or your daughter will be dead meat. You know I never liked her. Sasha finished in a cold, venomous voice. Frank was stunned beyond words. A wave of cold shiver coursed through his body at once. To make matters worse, Frank heard Winnie's unmistakable voice crying, Daddy, Daddy, please save me. Sasha warned Frank not to play smart by involving his colleagues, or Winnie would be dead. Frank finally found his voice after he had recovered from the initial shock, but just as he tried to say something, the call ended abruptly. Frank flung his phone aside, covered his head in his palms, and felt his whole world shatter. But his cop instincts and training quickly kicked in, and he regained composure. He took a deep breath, straightened up, and focused on the task at hand. His first thought was to immediately file a missing person report, and then track the caller down with the help of the cops. But on second thought, Frank dismissed the idea. Sasha had severely warned him against that particular course of action, or Winnie would be killed. Something inside Frank told him that she wasn't bluffing with the threat. So what would he do? Frank bitterly wondered. He knew he could easily poison Eunice to death. He was the one who got the police chief her lunch from the canteen almost every afternoon. He also knew her every movement and could easily lay an ambush to shoot her dead. However, Frank knew too well that he could never bring himself to take Eunice's life. She was more than just a boss and mentor to Frank. He owed his top position in the department, with all its perks and influence, to her. But Frank also loved Winnie more than any other person in the world. He had vowed to always choose her above anyone to protect her. Frank found himself caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. 
Frank was still lost in deep thought when Celine came home from work. She immediately noticed her husband's moodiness and asked him what the problem was. Frank had told her everything. Celine was devastated. She consoled Frank, who was close to tears, and assured him that everything would be fine. Lizzie soon woke up from her nap and asked her mom about her beloved sister, Winnie. Celine convincingly lied to the three-year-old Lizzie that Winnie had traveled to a holiday camp and would soon be back home. Frank continued going to work as usual. At the office, he managed to keep a normal countenance so as not to raise any eyebrows. But deep inside, Frank was dying. His anxieties and worries only grew worse with each passing day as he pondered on what to do to save his beloved daughter without hurting an innocent person in the process. Two days later, Frank received another call from Sasha. She bluntly told him that he had only five days left to kill Eunice. Just in case he had forgotten, or Winnie would be killed. Sasha didn't even wait for Frank's response before the line went dead. The following days were hellish for Frank. He had become a mere shadow of himself. Frank requested a break from Eunice for health reasons, and she immediately granted it. At home, Frank desperately focused on finding a way to save his daughter and his boss, all to no avail. Around 10.30 p.m. on the fifth day, something shocking happened. Frank and Celine were having dinner while Lizzie was asleep. Frank had lost his appetite since the first call, so Celine waited each night to have dinner with him, urging him to eat. As she was pleading with Frank to eat, a loud bang sounded on the door. Frank immediately shuddered and jumped up in fright. Celine was scared too. Frank was about to run to his room to get his pistol when a voice screamed from the door. Daddy, mommy, it's me, Winnie. Frank and Celine were shell-shocked. They both rushed to the door at once. Frank got to the door first and pulled it wide open. There stood his Winnie, looking unkempt and terrified. Frank immediately grabbed Winnie and pulled her indoors. He then locked the door. Frank embraced Winnie tightly as the duo cried tears of joy. Celine joined the embrace and started sobbing too. It was such an emotional moment. At long last, Frank disentangled himself from the embrace. He then promptly told Celine to wake Lizzie up and pack a few things. Frank was sure Sasha would come after them, so they needed to leave the house right away. Celine rushed upstairs to do as she was told. With his right arm over her shoulders, Frank led Winnie to the dining table where he spoon-fed her the meal he had barely touched. Twenty minutes later, Frank was driving his family down to a faraway hotel. Lizzie was so happy to see Winnie back. She had flown to her stepsister the moment she saw her. Winnie embraced Lizzie tightly while fighting hard to hold back her tears. She didn't want the little girl to start suspecting anything. To Lizzie, the family was heading to a normal vacation. About an hour later, the family arrived at the hotel and settled into their new home. Winnie soon slipped out of the sitting room, where she had been watching a kiddies TV show with Lizzie, who was already dozing and had stuck to her like glue ever since she returned home. Winnie made her way to her parents' room and found both of them waiting for her, anticipation written all over their faces. She sat between Frank and Celine on the bed and began her story. And what an unbelievable story it was. According to Winnie, she was forced into a truck by four hefty men on her way back from the grocery store that fateful afternoon. Once inside the truck, the men gagged her and blindfolded her. They drove her to an unknown location at breakneck speed. The men pushed her out of the truck and dragged her into a house the moment the car stopped. When they finally removed her blindfold and ungagged her mouth, Winnie found herself in a tiny room that looked like a house's basement. Both of her legs were shackled and chained to a metal post. The men then warned her that she would be shot dead if she made any noise. Soon, Sasha and one strange-looking Latino man, who appeared to be their boss, came to her with a satellite phone. Sasha then ordered Winnie to plead with Frank to come save her on the phone. 
She did so, and Sasha immediately took the phone away from her and abruptly left with the man. When he disclosed that it was the last time she ever saw either Sasha or the man, the men fed her well and never laid a finger on her. They took turns guarding her and were responsible for leading her to a nearby restroom when she needed to relieve herself. On the second day, Winnie noticed that the guard assigned to her that afternoon looked like a teenager. She also noticed that the dashingly handsome boy kept staring at her with a countenance that was a mix of pity and admiration, so she decided to take the risk and try to chat with him. When he asked the boy his name in a very low tone. At first, he seemed reluctant to speak to her, but then he suddenly blurted out, Carlos. The following afternoon, Carlos arrived for a shift, smiling at her from ear to ear. She smiled back at him. Carlos then dipped his hands into his pockets and brought out a big packet of chocolates, which he handed over to Winnie. She devoured the chocolates much to Carlos's satisfaction even promised to get her more the following day. The two chatted as usual throughout Carlos's shift. Winnie soon realized that she was starting to like Carlos, who continued to shower her with chocolates and anything she asked for. Winnie even started to look forward to his shifts, and she would always feel like crying whenever Carlos was about to leave at the end of his shifts. The young duo got closer with each passing day, but Winnie noticed that each time she tried to ask him about the group or why they had kidnapped her, Carlos's composure would change completely. He would look scared and uncomfortable and change the topic or simply ignore the question. On the fifth day, Carlos just couldn't help it anymore. He suddenly blurted out to Winnie that he was falling in love with her. Winnie confessed to Carlos that she had also fallen in love with him. Winnie went for broke and asked Carlos to help her escape. Carlos thought for a long while. Finally, he told Winnie to wait till the following day so he could think up an escape plan. Winnie profusely thanked him amidst tears. Carlos consoled her and then told Winnie his story. According to him, his boss, Enrique, who was a drug lord and mafia boss, had forced him into working for him. Carlos then revealed to Winnie that his mom, Jenny, had been diagnosed with kidney disease when he was just 14. He was her only child, and his father had died, so Carlos had no option but to start begging for alms on the streets. One afternoon, Enrique met him while he was begging on the streets and promised Carlos that he would pay for his mom's kidney transplant if he started working for him as a delivery boy. Carlos agreed at once. Enrique took him from the streets and soon started giving Carlos packages to deliver to different addresses. Enrique paid him a modest amount of money after each delivery. However, he reneged on his promise to pay for Jenny's kidney transplant. Sadly, Carlos' mom died about six months later. Upon learning of his mom's death, Carlos attempted to escape from Enrique's base, but his men caught him and brought him back. Enrique threatened to kill him if he ever tried to escape again. It was also at that point that Carlos learned that the packages he was delivering for Enrique were actually drugs. That was how Carlos was forced to fully join Enrique's gang against his will. The following afternoon, Carlos arrived for his guarding shift as usual. But before he left, he told Winnie that he would be back for her. Around 7.30 p.m. that night, Winnie suddenly noticed that the man who was guarding her was deeply asleep and even snoring. Five minutes later, Carlos slipped into the room. He unchained Winnie, gently opened the door, and they fled together. The duo, pumped with adrenaline, ran through a thick and large wood for their lives until they finally got to a junction. Carlos then immediately handed Winnie a note that contained a phone number and told her to contact him later. He kissed Winnie goodbye and instructed her to follow the right side of the road before he ran off in the opposite direction. Winnie sharply turned around and continued running as fast as she could. She soon got to a busy night bar she recognized well and then she finally made it home. Frank told Winnie to call the number Carlos had given her 
and tell him that her dad had decided to fully cooperate in bringing Enrique to justice, promising not to implicate Carlos if he helped. When he called the number, and Carlos picked up immediately, happy to hear she was safe. She relayed her father's proposal, and Carlos agreed without hesitation. He knew Enrique and his gang would be after him for drugging the guard and helping Winnie escape. Frank then took over the call, asking Carlos for all the necessary information about Enrique. Carlos provided everything Frank wanted to know, including the addresses of the gang's hideouts. Frank thanked Carlos, ended the call, and immediately swung into action. He called Eunice and told her that he had just found an informant who had given him all the needed information on Enrique. Eunice was well pleased. Enrique was the top criminal and drug lord on Eunice's wanted list. She had publicly vowed to bring him down several times. Her man had even captured one of Enrique's associates, Pedro, who was under interrogation. However, the tough Pedro had refused to talk or cooperate with the cops since his capture. Enrique feared Pedro would eventually crack, which is why he wanted Eunice dead, to disrupt the interrogation and buy time for his gang to go underground. Eunice gladly gave Frank full authority to get Enrique dead or alive. The following day, Frank assembled a team of two dozen heavily armed officers equipped with full protective gear. At nightfall, acting on the information Carlos had provided, Frank led the team to storm Enrique's gang's major hideout. Upon arrival at the isolated hideout, Frank's team surrounded the place. But Enrique's gang was fully prepared for the cops. They weren't going down without a fight. So they engaged Frank's team in a shootout. During the gunfight, Enrique and eight of his men were all shot dead on the spot. Five other members of the gang managed to escape, but the cops were hot on their heels, and the five of them, including Sasha, were captured. Four officers received varying degrees of injuries during the gunfight, but none of them died. One week later, under intense pressure, Sasha confessed during the investigation. She admitted to meeting and marrying Enrique a few months after divorcing Frank. After learning of Pedro's capture, she conceived the plan to kidnap Winnie to force Frank to kill Eunice, driven by her grudge against both Frank and Winnie. Sasha also confessed she had planned to kill Winnie regardless. She was charged in court two weeks after her capture and received a life imprisonment sentence for kidnapping, attempted murder, and drug dealing. Frank took his family back home a day after Sasha's sentencing, as he was fully aware that Enrique's gang had been decimated, hence they posed no threat to his beloved family. Two days later, Winnie called Carlos and asked him out on a date the following day. He happily agreed. On the day of the date, she ran to him as soon as she saw him and hugged him tightly. Carlos was thrilled to see Winnie. Seven years later, Winnie and Carlos got married and moved out to start their own family. Winnie remained forever close to Frank, Celine, and Lizzie. What do you think about this story? Feel free to share your comments with us in the comment section. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.